Unix. This is going to be a long weekend. And uh, I was going to say long weekend. Actually, it won't be long at all. Eight hours today, eight hours tomorrow. That's 16 hours. And then we have a weekend off. And then we come back again for eight hours and eight hours. And then we have, I think, another week off. Maybe two weeks. I don't know. One, one more week off, and then we come back again. So this is Marathon Unix. Hello, we're just getting started. <coughs> what you looking at is the syllabus. How many people are brand new to ITU? Lots of people. Okay, so I'll go through a bunch of stuff that existing people, because I know I have some day students. When I say day students, I mean no, weekday students. Um, some students that are have taken this class because they were looking for another class, and I opened up. You actually got in when you're lucky, because they put it in the small little room. And it doesn't take as many people. <sighs> so it's not like, but this is actually more fun than 102. 102, they stick like 50, 60 people in there, and then you can't teach. I mean, as a teacher, it's just impossible. You got like, it's just like teaching to a movie theater crowd. I mean, it's just not, it's not nice for teaching. So this is a much better teaching environment. You'll learn a lot in this class, actually, more so than you will in the bigger classes. We're actually going to be working on Unix, so hopefully you brought a computer with you, a Windows or a Mac computer, doesn't matter. You can use either one. <coughs> but before we get into Unix, I have to show you a few things about the class and about the way that the class is going to run. So we start at 9 o'clock in the morning, and we run till noon. Then we have a lunch break. And then we come back and we go till 6 o'clock at night. I usually take like maybe hour and a half, two hour lunch. We'll play it by air, see how far we get through. Because it gives you a little break. Because it's not good to, it's not good to sit down all day. So what we'll do is we'll sit down for a couple hours, and we'll have a ten minute break or so, and then we'll get up, walk around. I highly encourage you to walk around when we get up. Imagine sitting eight hours completely. Your back's gonna hurt. Your legs gonna hurt. It's really bad for you actually as a human. You're not supposed to be sitting for that long. And some of these chairs aren't that comfortable. You guys are lucky. You got the better chairs over here. Those wooden chairs are not good. <clears throat> I'm getting over a cold. Actually, not really a cold. I have this lingering cough, so I'll be coughing all day today, so hopefully that won't bother you. If it gets really bad, I have some medicine I can take. It slows me down a little bit, but it takes the cough away. So I have pros and cons to that. We'll see what happens. <clears throat> so, so far I haven't taken the medicine yet, so I've still got, still got mental capabilities. <laughs> so, um, Unix. Uh, as I was mentioning before, if you have a MacBook, you're already set. you got everything installed that you need because this is a BSD system, and you have Unix on here. But we're also going to Telnet, so you'll see Telnet. We'll use Putty this morning, and uh, we'll SSH into a Unix server, and you all have some Unix accounts that I'm going to be giving to you. And you'll be doing all of your work on a Unix server. Um, it's an Amazon server, actually. It's not too bad. Uh, designed just for this class, set up just for this class. Um, and so it'll... Be writing scripts and moving files around and doing all sorts of different activities and saving it. I go in and I grade you on the server. So it's pretty easy actually in terms of uh, organizing your work and it's pretty easy to turn stuff in. We have seven assignments for this course. We'll do most of them in class. So we'll at least start you out in class and then I'll give you time to finish them. You'll see it when I go through assignment number one. So it's not a heavy duty take home homework assignment kind of class. In fact, if I skip ahead to the deliverables for this class, you see we'll have seven homework assignments that we'll do. We'll start them in class. I'll do them to start them together with you, <clears throat> and then you'll finish them on your own, and then I'll give you some class time to do it in. And then we have a CSLO essay that you'll do on your own, and you can do that between now and the end of the course. It's not due till the very end of the course. And I'll go through those due dates with you momentarily. And then we have a final exam that's in class. So the final exam is during the last weekend of the course. And it's on the Sunday at 3 o'clock. So I can't change it around. So lucky for you guys, you're so bunched up together. If you're living locally, it's nice because you're over with this class by the end of February, practically. <coughs> if you're not local, you're flying back and forth for several weekends, um, all within the same month. Maybe you can get a discount on airfare, I'm not sure. Or maybe you could just stay locally or something like that for a while. Uh, it depends on whether or not you're working. But uh, long story short, <clears throat> the final exam will be accumulative over the first two weekends. I don't normally include anything from the last weekend 
in that at final exam because it's really hard to show up on a Saturday, listen to me lecture all day, and I don't lecture all day on that on that Saturday. I usually give you time to work on stuff. But hopefully by then you have all the work done. But it's really hard to actually um, <coughs> learn something the day before you take an exam on it. So most of the bulk of the material I'm going to give you is going to be in the first two weekends. So we'll spend the first two weekends really um, getting everything done that you need to get done. And then I'll have some fun stuff for us to do the third weekend on Saturday. And then Sunday morning I usually give you some time to, to study for the exam. And the exam is a large portion of the grade. It is 35%. So if you don't do well on the exam, you're not going to... Well, you'll get in with a B in the class. It won't be too bad. You're still going to pass the class. You just won't end up with an A. That's what's going to happen. So the exam is pretty much going to going to determine your grade. Um, and But the exam is actually going to measure what you've learned. So what you're looking at is the syllabus for the course. If you're brand new, how many people do not have access to the EMS yet? You all have access to the EMS? So if you go into the EMS and you're like, EMS, what's that? It's this. If I type in ems.itu.edu, my EMS looks different than yours. Mine my, definitely the interface looks different. I don't even know what you look at, what you guys get actually, because they don't show us that your interface. I only get my interface, so it's just kind of anyway. I won't go there. Uh, our class is right here. If I go into our class, this is what I see. <clears throat> now you can see what I see. <laughs> so <laughs> I see this whole big old setup looks like this. We'll call them on the left hand side. If I go into what I call my assignments group here, I see this is where I'm going to be submitting, if I were a student, all of the assignments. And you see the due date and everything is 218. So the class ends the weekend of 218. You do not have the entire, this is basically for the benefit of the day students or the weekday students, I want to call them that. Um, who are familiar with the way that I normally run my weekday classes. I give you 16 weeks to turn. You don't have 16 weeks. This class is accelerated. It's going to run over a couple months or a month and a half or so. It'll be over with by the end of February. So your due dates, and this is the important thing to note, especially for the first day of class. Normally people want to know due dates and stuff. The due dates are going to be the 18th of February. That's our last weekend. So I'm just making sure and they are they're at midnight. If you turn it in at 12:01, it's not acceptable. You don't get, you can't turn it in. There's no, there's absolutely no lateness. So, and actually, this is the same with your CPT reports too. If you're on CPT, you miss the deadline by one second. You're hosed. You can't turn it in anymore. What does that mean? It, I don't accept it. I can't accept. It. I'm not allowed to accept it. I can't accept it by email, and you can't get it into the system. You can't get it into the system. You can't get a grade for it. Do not miss the deadline. <laughs> don't wait until the 11th hour or the 12th, you know, the last. Don't wait till the last five minutes before the due date. You won't get it in because the server will go down. Seriously. And then it, we have no, we have nothing we can do for you. As a teacher, I have nothing I can do for you. Even if you beg the IT people, they still won't let you submit it. So, long story short, don't put yourself in that position. Um, I wouldn't even wait till the last day. I'd do it like maybe two or three days before. I wouldn't wait till the last day either. Because oh, lo and behold, everybody else is waiting till the last day. And they all wait till the last day and the server goes down because it can't handle the volume or, you know, who knows what happens. It's technology. You guys all work and hopefully you're taking a Unix course, so hopefully you're not technology adverse and you're all familiar with the concept of servers going down when too much traffic goes through it. It's typical. You think you would solve it by now. It doesn't go down as badly as it used to, though. Now it only goes down for five or ten minutes, generally right before the midnight hour, <clears throat> which is just the timing for you to miss the submission of the assignments. So that's the last time I'll mention that one. Uh, but yeah, don't don't wait. Uh, but you see, in here we have the seven assignments. They're open now. You can you could you could complete the class in the next five minutes if you wanted to by uploading all of the assignments and turning in everything, except for the final exam. You have to wait till last weekend to take the final exam. <laughs> I can't imagine anyone being this fast, though. So normally students don't come, <coughs> don't really submit anything until the last day, which is why I'm telling you don't do it that way. Wait till the second to the last day. Your chances of getting it in are a little higher. <laughs> so <coughs> anyway, 
I also have another website that you might be from might, might some of you the day student, weekday students are familiar with new students may not be familiar <coughs> with it it's called www.bhecker.com that's me uh, Barbara Hecker <laughs> that's my website you know my email is bhecker at itu.edu this is for brand new people best way to reach me is by email I actually answer my email Unfortunately, not everybody here does, which is why I'm telling you I do. You'll get, you'll get, I want to almost say my turnaround time is less than 12 hours, actually, right now. You guys know, you send me a message instantly. If I'm online, that's the first thing I'm doing. I'm checking those messages. So, and I'm online all the time. I don't carry a phone with me, which is the most ironic thing. People think, you know, oh, you don't have a phone. How are we going to reach you? Send me an email. Because, you know, actually, I carry a, actually, I do have a phone. I don't have phone. I don't have cellular service. I have Google Voice, but nobody uses that. Well, why do you use Google Voice? You just send a message. But I'm always in communication. So in my car, I have 3G service, but no telephone number. Instead, I have internet access over it. I know from those little hotspot things. So I just hooked my little tablet. I got an iPad Mini. I got an Android phone, but it's not a phone. It's an Android device. It's an internet device. So it's like I use email like I do the voicemail or like the telephone. It's it's a it's weird, but you know what? It works for me because it's you know it's it's just easier that way. Sometimes you know, especially a lot of people. I work with a couple of different schools. Um, this school's not so bad actually. Other schools, ESL is a huge issue. They can't speak English very. Well. They're mostly Chinese students at this other school. Um, well, okay, here's the schools. I, I teach at San Jose State, I teach at Cal State East Bay, I teach at Menlo College, and I teach here, off and on. I picked up this email thing because over at Menlo, there's a lot of Chinese students. And they can't speak. Seriously, they don't eat, learn English very well. You guys grew up with English. A lot of you guys have better English than I do. But they, so the word, then they take the word, they take the type text, and they run it through a translator. <laughs> yeah, they have all it's all over the internet. You just press translate into English, and then and some of them even read it reads it to them. So then, or translate from English to Chinese, and there's many different dialects of Chinese. So the text is actually easier for them to translate because they can't take a voicemail message and type it in to the computer, or they can't like I can't talk to them and have them understand what I'm saying because I have to type the stuff in and then they misspell it. So if they can just cut and paste the English and put it into Chinese. Works a lot easier that way. That's actually how I got into it. And then I figured, this is great for everybody. So, anyway, yeah, you'll never catch me on a phone, which is kind of ironic. Anyway, you've been staring at this website, so I'll tell you what it's about. <clears throat> this website has a little little button here that says Spring 2014. And uh, lucky for you in this room, this is a clear board, actually, which is good. Uh, downstairs, those boards are pretty bad. It's kind of fuzzy. This is really nice, actually. It needs to be cleaner, but uh, maybe at the lunch hour we'll clean it. If you go down here on the bottom, it says, uh, on the, excuse me, on the second one, I have an online session of this course going on, and then I have this one on the weekend. And so both of them are using the same materials, and it's the same course. Uh, but you'll see the weekend schedule here. So this is January 18th, 19th, and as I was mentioning before, we come back in February, and then we come back in February again. So February, the due date, Excuse me, the due date is February 18th. The class is the 15th to 16th, which means we get to spend some of the last weekend doing some of the cleaning up some of the assignments and doing the last assignments. So you don't have to have everything done before you come back again. You'll have some time that weekend to complete some of the work. It's not good till the 18th. I believe the 18th is Tuesday. Because then people say, well, I have to travel back home. Monday is really tough. Well, we'll just make them do Tuesday. <laughs> so just in case you can't get back home in, in one day's time. You know, I don't blame you when I'm traveling. When I get back from sitting in an airplane six or seven hours, or however long you're sitting in an airplane, I just want to, like, eat and sleep or something. I don't really want to do homework at that point. <laughs> so a lot of people do stuff on the plane, stuff like that, read and stuff like that. So. It's after the final exam, so I can't imagine what else you'll be doing. Um, so if you go into the Unix operating system, you'll see up here the syllabus. The syllabus is also in the EMS. Um, and I think, oh, here we go. So we have the course syllabus, and I have the online course syllabus. So we're the weekend class. We're this one here. We're not online. 
they're the same syllabus really but this one has a different schedule in it and then we have our CSLO essay and then we have our seven assignments and then we have a bunch of these <coughs> excuse me a bunch of these lectures <coughs> and then I have some extras and some examples down here and then you know this way here on the bottom it says spring 2012 and all these videos here it says week weekend one lecture one weekend those are from the last time I taught this class so you may or may not have noticed I have this little red flashing button up here on the top I do uh, screen capture and recording this entire lecture has been recorded from the beginning so I started it before I started so what ends up happening is right underneath here probably around the lunch break I'll start uploading them I put the lectures in here so here's what happens you're running late you couldn't find parking what did she say what did she talk about at 9 o'clock in the morning when I wasn't here because I didn't arrive till 10.30. I missed the first hour. What did she do? Oh, just go to the video. You just click on the video and you watch it. And deja vu. You know, here's the class again. Um, or also this afternoon we'll be setting up putty. And we'll be setting up and we'll be tail ending into a Unix server and we'll be doing some stuff. And then <clears throat> you'll get lost. Or maybe not. Hopefully everybody will be on the same page. Or you'll miss a step. Or something won't be working for you. And then you'll have to sit there and watch instead of doing. And then later on when you actually have to do it, because you will have to, everybody will have to do everything. Later on, then you'll go, man, I wish you was here again, and I wish you could just go through this one more time with me. You can. You just turn on the video, and you watch it again. Oh, okay. And then you relive the entire experience. You can relive the lectures over and over again for as long as you want. They're on YouTube. So if you click on one of these links, it actually takes you to the YouTube channel. I'm going to stop this video. And then you'll notice in here, you'll see all of the other videos. So if you don't like our class, you can look at the class before it. You can look at the online class. You can look at any I have like four different versions of this lecture. And it's always the same. Unfortunately for me, it's always the same lecture over and over again. <laughs> but, uh, and then, you know, but every time I give it, it has a slightly different twist to it, so, which is good. And I can't, you know, I don't read you the slides, so I'm not going to give you the entire lecture the same way twice or three times. It's impossible to do it that way. But you'll see a more creative, today I'm feeling kind of creative, so you'll see a more creative interpretation of the material. It's all Unix, it's all the same material over and over again. If you look at the syllabus, and I'll show you that in a few minutes, you'll see a few things, <coughs> a few topic areas. So yeah, let's go back to 2011. Well, it's like a couple years ago. It's 2014. Yeah, this class is a pretty old class. Um, this is the best source of getting materials because you don't have to worry about logging in. It runs pretty fast usually. You know, all the examples are here. It's just kind of like a one-stop shop kind of place to find the stuff. I put all my classes up here. If you have other classes of mine, you'll find the stuff there as well. The EMS is where you submit everything. And all the materials in the EMS, you can find them, like if you click, click on Lessons. You won't find the videos in here. you only find the current course videos. So you'll see the lessons in here. <coughs> and then under resources, which is empty, is where you'll find the video recordings. But this is delayed. My, I'll have mine up by the end of the day. Probably half of it by lunch, the other half at the end of the day. These won't show up probably for another month or so. Probably by the client time the class is over with, the videos will be up here. So, so now you know why I do my own website and my own materials. Because then I can organize it and I can control not that I'm a control freak, but I have been called that. I can control when the stuff gets loaded and unloaded and changed and stuff. I'm just having to wait for the, some tech staff to do it. So. so what is this course about? <clears throat> it's about Unix. So how many people have actually worked with Unix already? And maybe just raise your hand. Oh, not too many. One, two. Keep them up. Keep them up, actually. Oh, wow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So you're going to take this class for easy, A. Eh? So you'll have to humor me. So. <laughs> so, uh, well, that's about half. How many people have never touched Unix before? Oh, good. Good. Okay. We at least have a one. As long as we have one, at least one person in here, it makes it worthwhile. There we go. So if you already have a background in Unix, you're going to be extremely bored in this class, but I am going to try and entertain you. If I eat a lot of sugar, especially after lunch, I'll be entertaining. Because <laughs> so, I need to, I need to make this fun somehow. But you're going to be bored. This is an introduction to Unix. So it's intended for, it's really intended for engineering management students, actually. <clears throat> and it's part of the engineering management program. It's also a core, pro, 
core, I think, also for software engineering. Yeah. It's really an introductory course. It's almost an undergraduate level course, actually. It's just introduction to Unix. I just covered basic Unix stuff. It's really good if you don't have any exposure to it at all. It takes all the fear factor away from using, using Linux, seriously. And then most people go out and buy MacBooks after that because they go, oh, yeah, Unix. <laughs> this is a Unix system. So you're a Windows system, not a Unix base. It's, you know, don't ask me about Windows. I'm not a Windows fan, obviously. <clears throat> so I didn't make you go out and buy MacBooks for this course, although you have to do it for the iOS classes and the Objective-C classes. But uh, not, not for this course. This course, you can do it on Windows. If you have Windows 8, I will tell you, Putty's got some issues. Putty's the software we're going to use. So I'm going to show you a couple of different software packages. And you're going to go, software? We're not installing Linux. We are not installing Unix or Linux. We're telnetting into it, or SSH, Secure Shell, into a Unix system. Why? Because I want you to use <coughs> Unix, not Linux. And in the first lecture, I'm going to go over the differences between the two of them. And you're, people are here, but with the Unix background, you're going to go, oh, oh, this is going to be boring. Yeah. It, the first couple lectures are going to be extremely boring for people who are familiar with this already. <clears throat> but um, it's an easy A for you. So, yeah. Plus, you know, you got to take the class, so take the class. You didn't get three points, three, three units of an easy A, seriously. All right. Uh, so what am I going to cover? Basic Unix commands. Unix concepts, connecting to it, shells, environments. The shells, you might find the shell stuff interesting. Uh, stuff about threads and processes. Uh, let's see, she's really going to like the video. Uh, let's see. Uh, file systems, shell scripts. We'll be writing a shell script today, actually. By the end of today, you'll be logged in, writing shell scripts, and doing everything. Some of you will be doing it a little bit faster than other people. But by the end of tomorrow, you'll all be hopefully at the same speed, is what I'm thinking. <clears throat> so, uh, C. Writing a little bit of C, but not too much. It's not a program. This is not a programming course. Although Unix is written with C. And I'll show you how to run GCC. And we'll, we'll look at C a little bit and C shell. Because there's a script, there's a shell that actually works with C. So, you don't have to worry about writing Perl, but we'll look at Perl in this course as well. Perl's a really popular scripting language uh, for Unix. It's a Unix core. Every Unix distribution has it installed in it. Python. We're not going to do very much in Python now, but I'll go over some of the Unix scripting tools. It's another scripting language. And then you'll go, oh, this sounds like web development. Yeah, this is a good class to take if you're going to be a web developer. Because what are you going to do? You're going to upload all your files to a Unix server. <clears throat> the Unix, excuse me, the internet, 99.9% .9 Unix servers. You get a public HTML directory. You got to know how to make it public, change mod on the directory, put the files in there, change the mode on the files so that they're also public, accessible. Upload your stuff, know about paths, absolute relative paths, know about utilities, what's installed on that server and what is it on the server? Is it Apache? If it is Apache, what's inside of it? We got Perl in there, we got PHP in there, we got MySQL, all of the little tools that go along with it. You can't, if you're afraid of that, but in this course you won't be afraid of it, but if you're afraid of that, how are you gonna, how are you gonna, how are you gonna distribute your site, how are you gonna put your site up? If you can't log, and the ISP is just gonna give you an IP address. Here you go, and here's your, uh, Here's your SS. Here's here's your your admin name and here's your admin password and here's your IP address. Go for it. And then you gotta. So, but in this course, you'll be able to do that, no problem. Uh, but you'll also be able to do a lot more as well. That's just the basic. You'll you'll be able to do that by the end of today, actually. So, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of web developers that or business people that could use this course, and that's why it's in the engineering management. That's part of. That's why I encourage engineering management students to take it. Are you guys all software engineering or are you all engineering management? Software engineering. Everyone in here? Uh, raise your hand if you're not if you're not a software engineering major, raise your hand. You're all software engineering majors? Uh, the registration department, you, you work in that department too. Engineering management students should be taking this course. Hello, come on in. Water's warm. All right. <clears throat> it's actually not as warm as it was early. It's not, not starting to get decent in here now. It was really hot in this room when we first opened it. 
Learning outcomes, being familiar with general historical development of the Unix, basic Unix commands, modern operating systems, yada yada. I'm not going to go through all that. There's a book down here. It's called Unix for Programmers and Users. You don't have to get it. It's back from 2003. There's probably a more current version of it. I have discovered that students do not buy textbooks. <laughs> go figure. Or if they do buy it, they illegally download them, the PDF versions from the internet. I did not put a I did not assign a book for this course. Unix hasn't changed in about thirty or forty years or so, or fifty years or so. It's it's pretty solid. Unix commands have been around for centuries. There's so much information on the internet. I would say the man pages, manual page, Unix manual pages is probably the last resource, but although it was the first resource that was available, Unix is probably one of the most well documented operating systems out there. So long story short. I want you to find your own reading material on what you need help with. Some of you who are already having, you're not going to, any book is going to be a waste of money for you. Uh, the new people, if I give you a book, you're not going to know what to do with it. <laughs> if I say, oh, I need more help on putty, then you know what to do. You go out to the internet and you find, and there's tons of tutorials and instructions on putty, as an example, or SSH, or what's this telnet thing, you know, or what's this and what's that, what's a shell, you know, then you go out and you do your own research. So there's a lot of self-study, a lot of, this is a graduate level course, <laughs> although the subject matter I would say is not so graduate level per se, it's really basic, but the study mode and the way you're going to go about studying for this course is very graduate level. Graduate students go out, and especially in the U.S., it's you got to find what you need more information on and you do research and you learn how to research stuff and you find books and you buy books or you rent books or you download things and articles and stuff legally and you figure out what it is you need with your background to fill in the blanks so that you can be up to speed with what's going on in the class. So that's the approach you're going to take in this class. I'm not going to sign, it's not an undergraduate course, I'm not going to sign reading material, I'm not going to say you have to buy this book or anything like that. You'll know what you're short on, and then you go and you find the information. There's a ton of Unix books out there. Um, most of them are free. You'll find what you're short on. And then, in fact, a lot of the stuff, in fact, I put some resources out on bhacker.com I'll talk about. A lot of it is just reference material. Who reads a book on Linux? Nobody does. You go and you find, how do I search a directory? Oh, ls. What are the commands options for ls, the parameters? I don't know. I seriously don't. I know or I, I know minus H, you know, I know minus W, you know, some of the common things that I do. And then most of what ends up happening is you learn the command and you just use them over and over again. And there's a certain subset that you'll just memorize by usage. And then there's another subset you'll go, ah, I know there's a way of doing that. And then you go to the book or you go to the internet and you find out what the command switch is. And then you figure that out and then you use it. Nobody reads a book go through thousands of commands one by one, that's, that's, that's not realistic in terms of understanding an operating system. You didn't learn Windows by reading a book. How are you going to learn Unix by reading a book? So, Actually, it's a good parallel talking about Windows right now because most of the brand new people are on Windows, which is actually kind of interesting. Most of the experienced people that raise their hand or have MacBooks, some of them do. <laughs> so, which is actually kind of ironic. Not really ironic, very realistic. Uh, Windows, when we first learned it very, 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 very long time ago, probably is what I'm thinking. You know, at least 10 years ago. I don't think that Windows 8 was your first Windows version, or Windows 7 was probably not that either. It probably started on XP or something. Yeah. <clears throat> if that is the case, you invested some time. You spent a couple weeks probably. Maybe even a couple of years, getting familiar, getting comfortable. When you first opened up your first brand new computer, it wasn't very familiar to you. Actually, a lot of people are still getting used to Windows 8. It's just like 7, the different UI. But long story short, you invested some time and you got familiar with it. And then once you get familiar with it, you go, ah, this is easy. You didn't read a book on it. You used it. That's what we're doing in this class. So you're going to be Unix people by the end of this month or so, or end of February. So you can just use Unix, just like Windows. 
it's just like Windows. It's just a different operating system. You're learning about an operating system is what you're doing. So you're getting familiar. That's why I say it's like really an undergraduate kind of level course. You know, it's, people have been using it for years, but there's a lot of fear. You don't have a lot of fear with Unix for some strange reason. I don't know why. You guys are even taking a full course. Could you imagine taking a course called Windows Operating System? <laughs> <laughs> Who would sign? Actually, you all would sign up for it. That'd be easy, A. Eh? <laughs> we should offer Mac Operating System. <laughs> why in the world do we have Unix Operating System? That's just that's okay. From my perspective, the way I think about that, it's kind of like how you would think. Why would anyone want someone to have Windows? OS as a course. I'm thinking, why in the world do you want me to teach? When they ask me to teach this class, I'm like, why do you want me to teach Unix? <laughs> Unix OS. That just seems silly. You know? It's like, why, don't, why, why, why am I teaching that? So it's kind of, uh, you know, by the end of the course, you'll go, why? Yeah, why? Because the funny thing is, is that you guys are, if you're software engineering students, you should, probably should know this stuff already. If you don't know it, you should know this, so that's why we're teaching this course. So it's really just to get everybody on the same page. Academic, just honestly, I will tell you one thing: it's really hard. This class will not have any problems. It's extremely hard to cheat in this course. You can't recycle assignments because the assignments are done in real time. If I have you go into a, if I have you SSH shell secure shell into a Unix system. Open up Nano or VI, write a file with your name on it, and stick it in your folder. And you all have different folders. How are you going to cheat with that? <laughs> if I tell you to recursively copy an entire directory structure from one location to another location, all inside of your root, which is going to be your individual account, how are you going to cheat? <laughs> it's impossible to cheat in this class. So I don't even have to discuss. I don't even have to discuss academic dishonesty. However, this CSO essay is the only thing you could possibly cheat on. Because it's a writing assignment. It's not a Unix exercise. So the assignments, the homework assignments you can't cheat on. If you cheat on the CSLO essay, and because there's nothing else in this class really that I can check, I will be checking the CSLO essays. Now, brand new people don't have to worry about this. Existing people, we know that there's some instructors that don't look at anything. We know that there's some instructors that look at some things but not other things. I'm telling you, I'm looking at the CSLO essays. I will be looking at them with a fine-tooth comb to make sure that they are actually written by you. <laughs> what does that mean? Don't cut and paste off the internet. And for brand new students, you might not be, I don't know if they still have them yet. Existing students would probably know. We used to have news groups, Google groups. Or, no, there were Yahoo groups, and then they turned. Students used to join these groups. This is typical, not just at this school, everywhere this happens. This is the life of a student. You join a group, and then you recycle assignments. Hey, does anyone have a CSLO for this class? <laughs> Seriously. And then people send it out to the group, you know. Or, hey, do you have a website that has the answer to this? You know. <laughs> oh, yeah, and then they give all the way. And then the assignments come in, and half of them are the same. Because they all come from the news group, or they came from a website, or, you know, there's communication. Um, actually, even on our Facebook site, at one point we had students cheating, which is actually kind of ironic. They removed the messages, but students were trying to exchange information. Anyway, then you get zip files. In fact, actually, for the Android class a couple years ago, I got zip files with stuff that was inside of the zip file. It was identical, but it had somebody else's name on it. They didn't even change the name. In fact, they couldn't even figure out how to unzip the file. Though they're RAR, 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 RAR files, RAR files. They couldn't figure out how to, un, how to un, uncompress them. They didn't even know what they were. They were just turning them in. And then I was looking at them going, opening up, going, do they even realize that it has this guy's name on it? And the guy who has the name on it took the class like a year prior, and I had changed all the assignments. So it was the old assignment from when he took the class a year ago, and all these students were turning it in. And it came from a Google, a Google group. Because <laughs> then one of the students, when I called them on it, I said, well, where'd you get this thing from? Everyone's got it. You must have downloaded it from somewhere. And then he was trying. He thought he was, if he told me the source, like he'd get like some break or something. <laughs> this isn't the police department, this is school. <laughs> you got a zero, what you got? Tell me the truth or not, you're still gonna get a zero. <laughs> But 
He thought he was going to cut a deal. I'll tell you where I got it from. <laughs> so I was looking at them like, oh, thank you. Because then I got all the list of all the other students. I don't even have to look anymore. I already know where they got it from. <laughs> anyway, don't do it. Long story short. Grading policy. There's absolutely no such thing as an A plus at this school. Don't ask me for an A plus. You're not getting an A plus. 100% is 100%. An A is an A. 4.0 is a 4.0. Other schools like high school, they have A plus. What is it? 4.1 or something? Or 4.2 or something? <laughs> How can you get higher than a 4.0? I don't get it. You're not going to get an A plus. An A. If you, actually, most of you will probably get an A. If you already have Unix background, I can't imagine why you wouldn't, actually. But no promises. You actually have to complete the course to earn the grade. Uh, but this is not what I'm going to call one of those challenging courses for everybody. This is a pretty easy, fun class. So hopefully you'll have some fun and you'll learn a little bit about the Unix in this course. And that you know, won't be like a huge stressful kind of burden for you to take. <coughs> so today... We're covering, well, actually half of the, well, half of a third of this. So it's a 16-week course. So if we take this and divide it by two, or divide it by three, divide this by two, we're probably going to get through Introduction to Unix, Basic Unix Commands, and VI Editor. Lucky for you, I don't like VI. <laughs> Hate VI. You like VI? You can use VI. You like Nano, which is the one I'm going to show you. Use Nano. That's a better one. Why do, I mean, usually people go, how come you don't like VI? Too much to memorize. Too much overhead, you know. And then how often are you going to use VI? And those people are brand new. Think of Notepad. <laughs> it's an editor, a text editor. So. All right, so we're going to get through uh, writing files and changing commands on files and stuff like that. And scripts. We'll write a little script today, too. And we'll do assignment number one before today's over with. So we'll definitely get 90% through it. I'm actually going to do it as a class. So we'll sit down. It's kind of like the way I do my Android and my iOS. We'll just do it together. And hopefully you'll be able to follow along. If not, you just, you just take the video and you watch it later and fix, fix problems that you have. Um, but unfortunately, I can't put a finished solution out there because there's no such thing as a finished solution because it's in your directory. So, so what I'm going to do now is actually stop this recording because this is the introduction to the course unless we have any questions and for those people who just came in you know you can watch this video yeah. okay good so here yeah, you've been in my class before how did you end up twice you got lucky yeah i was uh, thinking to get your class immediately oh okay i was fortunate to have you in my class excellent thank you any more questions or any questions i should say not really more <laughs> no okay good so I'm going to stop this recording.